history of the Phyllis Crystal method. How did Phyllis receive the cutting the ties that bind, now called the Phyllis Crystal method, from the high sea? It was in the 1950s when Phyllis Crystal, along with Virginia, they set out to seek answers from a higher power. They would get into a meditative state and they started to receive answers. Sometime in dreams, sometime one person would go into a reverie, waking dream, meditation state and the other person would take notes. People would come to them seeking answers to questions or problem they have. They had kept this method very secret, even from their husbands. One day, a minister from a nearby church came to get some help. The minister was describing how the congregation would hold their hands in a circle. And out of nowhere, Phyllis said, no. And the minister asked, why? And Phyllis said, I have the faintest idea. But she was receiving the answers from the high sea. Then she got an image in her mind, which was rather annoying to her, of what we call the maypole today, which is what the kids would play around during the spring equinox. Kids would gather around the maypole, holding ribbons of different colors, dancing. Then Phyllis realized that this was the answer to the minister's situation. And she asked if the congregation would raise their hands and hold them as high above their head as possible instead of holding the hands down below. Because as they were holding the hands below, it was lowering the energy of the group to the lowest common denominator. And if they would hold their hands high as high as possible, the energy would be raised. So obviously, it would be very difficult and cumbersome and not practical for people to hold their hands up during the congregation. That led to the exercise maypole, where we imagine a pole and top of the pole is a symbol for high sea, a ball of golden light representing the high sea, or your own god or ishtadev, or anything that symbolizes or represent the highest wisdom within you. There is no limit to how and what the, what the high sea can be represented by. And what is high sea or higher consciousness? It is that part of our mind, also called the higher mind, the overmind, that knows everything about us. That is indeed our true self. That represents the highest within us. That does not die. And Maypole is a way for all of us, not just for Phyllis Crystal or Virginia, to connect to our high sea or higher consciousness. Just like the children do, mostly in Europe, during the spring equinox, dancing around the Maypole, holding a ribbon of their choice connected to the top of the Maypole. We have made it unnecessarily complicated for us to connect to our higher self. Whereas it is quite simple, very childlike. Part 2 of the story. 1972, Phyllis Crystal came to know about Sai Baba. 1973 is the earliest they could go to India, as her husband Sidney had some work in India. As Phyllis was waiting for darshan in Brindavan, Whitefield, Bangalore, India, as she described Sai Baba gliding between the men and the ladies. And as Baba passed by her, in her mind she thought, oh, he must not be my master. Because she believed that the master has to choose you. You don't choose your master. As soon as she had that thought, Baba turned around and remarked to Phyllis, so, there was a pause, you have come at last. And she was thinking to herself, how could she have arrived any sooner? Fast forward, Baba asked Phyllis to bring the manuscript and the first published book. 
and Phyllis was not planning on writing anything. Baba gave the guidance that the book has to be published in overseas as back then the printing and the paper was not of high quality in India. And Baba also told her that this method has to reach as many people in the world as possible. And when Phyllis remarked that how could she do that? She's just one person. And then Baba said, I will help. Soon Phyllis realized that high C that was giving the method to Phyllis and communicating with Phyllis was none other than Satya Sai Baba as their teachings were identical. As the method was developing, Baba had asked Phyllis to keep the method separate from the Satya Sai organization and the Sai circle. But during the Third World Youth Conference, Baba changed the program during one of the evenings and asked Phyllis to give a talk. And I was present there in the audience and enjoying the interaction between Baba and Phyllis. Later, Phyllis told us that in the inner scene, the high sea was telling her to do the maypole. And until that point, she had kept the method separate from this eye. And then Phyllis turned towards Baba and then Baba nodded that yes. That is when Phyllis introduced the maypole to more than 10,000 people present in the Sai Kulavanthal Puttaparthi Prashanti Nilayam. The only difference was, instead of asking people to imagine a maypole, she introduced it as heart-to-heart -heart meditation, where you could imagine that there was a ribbon connected to Baba's heart and your heart. By far, it was the most powerful maypole that I ever had a chance to participate in. The energy was just so high. Then later, when Phyllis came to New Jersey, and stayed with us for a couple of weeks while she was providing Phyllis Crystal Method training to people. She was reiterating that now the time has come where the two have to join the Phyllis Crystal Method and Satya Sai Baba's teachings because they are the same and they are based on no control. This method is a huge gift to humanity as it will bring about the golden age. And Phyllis said that we have made spirituality or connecting with our higher consciousness very complicated when it doesn't have to be. It is very simple. Through the Phyllis Crystal Method, as she says, this is the most powerful method she knows of. We connect to our subconscious mind through the visualization tools through these Phyllis Crystal Method symbols. And our subconscious mind is very childlike, very animal-like, which likes things very simple and likes repetition, which means practice them daily. As Phyllis would say, just use your imagination. The entire method is practiced through any one of the four modalities. Of the instructions given in the workbook, one can think them, one can feel them, one can visualize them, or, like most of us, imagine them. And it impresses upon the subconscious mind what the symbol intends. For example, the maypole sends a message to the subconscious mind that I wish to connect with the high C or the higher consciousness. And we need not seek perfection either from ourselves or from anyone else because it is a huge burden, an almost impossible one, to achieve or to expect anyone to achieve. As high C is the only one that is perfect, represented universally by sphere or ball, of golden light on top of the maypole. In olden days, people were aware of this fact that only the higher consciousness is perfect. So deliberately, they would leave a mark or a mistake in their work, painting or pottery, to remind themselves that only high C or the higher consciousness is perfect. So as Sai Baba said, that this method has to reach as many people in the world as possible. It's a huge gift for all of us to practice the method and to share them with as many people as high C brings to our contact. And through this process, as Phyllis reminded us, it can bring about the golden age sooner. What a privilege. What an opportunity of lifetimes. Thank you, Phyllis. And thank you all who are practicing it and sharing this method. Love to all.